<laughs> Good evening and uh, welcome to the February uh, 14th, 2006 meeting of the uh, Cape Elizabeth School Board. If we could start off with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Thank you. Um, do we have any adjustments to this evening's agenda at this point? I do have one thing to add under uh, resignations and retirements. Just came in today. Okay. Great. Um, in your packet, we had the January school board minutes along with the special meeting that was held on January 31st. Um, do I have a motion to accept both those meeting minutes? I'll move. Thank you. A second? Thank you, Rebecca. Any discussion, comments? Being none, all those in favor? 7-0. Comments by the high school and middle school representatives. Uh, why don't we start with the middle school representatives this evening, uh, Will and Jack. Oh, I'll be reporting on the 5th and 6th grade. Uh, this year, the 5th grade took a new test, the NWEAs, and they included reading, language, and math as part of the test. They produced really great results and data, and um, next year we hope that all 5th through 8th graders will be able to take them. Um, the 5th the and 6th graders will be having a gym social on March 3rd. Let's see. Indoor track has started. And a record number of students have joined with a total of 100, around 160 participants. Uh, yeah. Last Saturday, Cape Norda competed in the state championships. Um, Emily Atwood won both the girls classic and the girls skate race. The boys placed third and the girls won the championship. And actually, that's, that's all I have. Yeah. Thanks. Good evening. I'm going to be reporting on the 7th and 8th grade. Um, in sports, the girls' basketball season is coming to a close. Um, the 7th grade Kiev murals are coming along very nicely. Um, the, entire, uh, the entire school is going to have a, a trivia bee in which students can make their own teams and meet in the high school cafetorium for like a pop culture bee. And the prizes are going to go to the best team name, best costumes, uh, first place and runner-up, and we're having a really good turnout with that, and we're charging $5 a team, just hopefully to, uh, let's see. Um, and finally, the eighth grade has just had its third dance, um, which was a success. We sold carnations, and it all turned out really well. Great. Uh, thank you very much. Does anybody have any questions for our middle school speakers? No. Great job, guys. Thank you very much for the update. Our apologies for the background noise. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now for the high school students, uh, Connor and Bailey. Um, so today is Valentine's Day. And um, yesterday we got back our matchmaker results, which uh, we filled out this survey about a couple weeks ago, uh, just about ourselves and what we like to do. And yesterday we got this list of uh, people like you match with, like friends or um, of like both genders, guys and girls. I was friends with Daly apparently. Um, <laughs> Uh, so that was a lot of fun, and today Operation Smile, um, like they do every year, sold roses and delivered them uh, to the people you wanted them delivered to during uh, classes, and so that kind of added some fun in the middle of the winter, and things can tend to get kind of dull. Um, so that was definitely, definitely a plus. And as we told you last time we were here, uh, we had an election. For a new SAC president, 
uh, as Mary Cox has uh, left. She's at doing a seminar at Chewankee type of thing. And um, there was a lot of really great competition, <laughs> but uh, Matt Oakes pulled out on top, <coughs> and he's our new SAC president. <coughs> All right. Um, uh, today, I had a meeting with Steve Wessler, and he was the one who was going to come and talk to us about the like, sexual harassment issues and, uh, around the dance. And um, there's a bunch of kids there, and it was not, just another preliminary meeting before his big presentation. And he had some really good ideas, and we will be having a dance. And um, fan behavior at sports events is uh, an area that adults in the school system are kind of upset over. And it's an area where students and adults disagree. But uh, at the varsity basketball game the other day, which had a huge turnout and kids came in hordes and everyone wore white to white out the competition. But um, there was a lot of chanting and huge things, but even, and then kids would also say to each other to stop certain chants that even they thought were too much. That's about it. Um, does anyone have any questions for Connor and Daly? Can I just ask you guys, um, if you're comfortable just filling in the rest of the board a little bit of an update on the, the forum meetings that you guys are having. And I know that uh, some of the school board members have been able to attend them, but I think the rest of the board would be interested in some of the topics. You don't have to go into detail, but um, if you wanted to just share a little bit of information on that, that would be great. Um, well, recently we've been talking a lot about um, roundtable. Uh, discussions which are kind of groups of different uh, students in the high school who get together uh, you're assigned to a group uh, a couple times throughout a year and discuss certain topics and we've kind of not completely finalized but we've got a pretty good uh, sketch of the kind of thing we want to do where we have um, certain freshmen grouped with other freshmen and um, every week there will be a group of freshmen who will come in and have a discussion with um, a, group of upperclassmen. a group of upperclassmen and a teacher and they will stay with the same group and the same teacher as they go into sophomore year and then when they become upperclassmen they can be part of that same group um, and we're hoping to start this uh, after February break hopefully or as soon as possible um, and I think it, it's looking like it's going to be a really good thing. And it's something that the students kind of brainstormed with administration as to solving one of the um, goals that they had, which was to create a relationship with upper classrooms, right. plus create a relationship with a core group of other kids that they can have roundtable discussions with, and also to identify with one particular teacher or in, um, an adult throughout the school system for their four years. And they had a lot of discussion about it, and uh, this was a proposal that uh, they had come up together with the faculty. And I, I think it's great, and I wish you the best of luck. As it, I was impressed that we were going to try to do it after February vacation and, and not do that forever delay thing and say, let's try it next year. So mm -hmm. that's the type of conversations that are happening at that forum. And I know we have a lot of other topics to discuss. And, and again, I would welcome any other school board members who would like to come to attend their meetings uh, and we can get those dates to you because it, it's, it's refreshing to hear the students talk. So <clears throat> thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to uh, this comments from the public on non-agenda items. And I'd just like to take this opportunity uh, for the public who might be watching at home is that this portion of our school board meetings uh, are where we're looking for comments from the public and we welcome anyone who'd like to come, especially over the next couple months, to speak on any type of budget issues that it, we have. Um, we are going into that season of um, budget workshops, but again, that during the business meetings we will welcome any comments regarding any um, 
budget items. I know that the town council has also offered uh, to uh, make time available at their meetings during both business and workshops for any public comment on the town budget. Um, but as always, the school budget is a portion of the town budget, so it would not be uh, unusual for someone to also speak on a school item at the town council. So um, that being said, I just want everyone to know that there's no one here today, but um, please feel welcome at any of our other meetings. Uh, communications. Um, we have any other communications at this point? Uh, the, the retirements and those pieces that I have. Yeah. We're going to, Trish, I think we're going to move on, uh, that into recognition. Fine. Okay. And that was the discussion. Um, announcements of retirements. Okay. I have uh, three announcements. Two were in your packet, and a third one came in today. If you'll bear with me, I'd just like to read from the letters that I have received, and I will be passing the third one on to you. The uh, first one is from Claire Labrie who is our special services director. Uh, she has written asking that we please accept their, her letter to confirm her intent to retire on July 1st, 2006. Her last day of work for the Cape Elizabeth School Department will be June 30th, 2006. She writes, I want, to be, I want to specifically thank the school department for the professional support I have had and been given during my 10 years of employment. The vision and mission of the school department are excellent and I will truly miss the challenges put forth to all educators to ensure that everyone works together meeting them. It has been a pleasure working for the Cape Elizabeth School Department and for Cape Elizabeth School Board, both of whom have shown a high commitment to its students. Thank you again for allowing me the opportunity to work in a place that holds such high standards. I don't know if you want to take action on each one individually, if you want me to do all three and then take action. To accept a, a, resignation, a resignation. A retirement. A retirement, that's true. I'm sorry. Um, <sighs> sure, why don't we take them individually? Um, all those, um, do I have a motion to accept Claire Labrie's uh, retirement? That's so Kevin. moved. Kevin, thank you. A second? <clears throat> thank you. Linda, all those, uh, any discussion? Uh, all those in favor? Seven, zero. Okay. My second one is from Janet Favor. Uh, she's, she writes, I am writing this letter to inform you of my decision to retire at the end of this year, June 2006. I've been a special education teacher here at Pond Cove since 1989, and as you can imagine, I have seen many changes. The one thing that has been constant, though, has been the marvelous staff I have had the honor to work alongside. The new people have come along and some old friends have left, but the caliber of dedication and hard work has never diminished. From the beginning, I have had people model good teaching for me, taken the time to listen to my suggestions, and kindly re redirect me when I was off track. What an amazing 17 years I have had. It is, a, I, it is a little sad to think of leaving, but I have moved to Gardner and see myself starting a new period in my life. I have flower gardens and begin digging a space for vegetables. In the process, the stress of meetings, filling out forms, writing special ed evaluations, and keeping up with the latest curriculum will melt away. I can honestly say I am looking forward to smelling the roses and listening to the birds. Janet Favor. Sounds very nice. <laughs> um, you know, I have a motion to accept Janet Favor's uh, retirement. Thank you, Rebecca. A second? Trish, uh, any comments? Okay. Uh, all those in favor of accepting? Seven zero. Thank you, Alan. Okay, and the third one that I have, as I said, just came in this afternoon, but we decided we should get it on the agenda tonight uh, because of the hiring process. Uh, the third one is from Carolyn Russ. Uh, she writes, I am writing to inform you that I will be retiring at the end of this, the 2005 2006 school year. I've enjoyed my 26 years in the Cape Elizabeth school system, working in a variety of positions, including special education teacher teacher of the middle school gifted and talented, and for the last six years as teacher of sixth grade language arts and social studies. I value the opportunity I've had to collaborate with very professional and committed teachers and administrators, the support from parents, and most importantly, the time spent working with hundreds of students. As a parent, I also appreciate the fine education my two sons, both Cape graduates, received here. And that again is Carolyn Russ. Do I have a motion to accept Carolyn Russ's retirement? 
So moved. Thank you. Uh, is there a second? Thank you, Trish. Uh, any comments? I wish all of the retirees uh, the best of luck and thank them for all their service. And with that, all those in favor? 7 0. Okay. I also have an announcement of a resignation. I do have a resignation. This is also from uh, Cape Elizabeth Middle School. The new year is underway. The time has come for me to make a decision regarding the upcoming 2006 2007 school year. I have not had the pleasure of working with you as I have been uh, on leave for a year uh, from the position of the fifth grade team following the birth of my son. I've decided that the best thing for my family and myself is to formally resign from my teaching position so that I can be home full time. The decision was not made lightly and it is difficult to walk away from my dear friends and colleagues in the school system. My three years teaching fifth grade was some of the most fulfilling times in my life and were marked with small moments of inspiration that I'll carry with me always. I look forward to returning to the profession in the years to come and there is nowhere else that I would rather call home than the Cape schools. And that is Megan Crabtree. I have a motion to accept uh, Megan Crabtree's uh, resignation. Reluctantly moved. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds kind of personal. Yeah, she's <laughs> How about a second? Thank you. Um, comments, I, I, I agree. It, it, we will sadly miss Megan. Um, she was a great addition to our fifth grade team. Um, and I'll be looking for all those in favor. Be 7-0. Uh, confirmation of return of teachers on unpaid leave. And this is only for information's sake. This does not require your vote. Uh, the first one is from Holly Smevog. Uh, she is a part -time te has a part-time teaching position at Cape Elizabeth High School as a technology integrator. Did I say that right? Uh, did I say high school? Middle school, excuse me. Uh, and Holly will be returning as a, a half-time uh, technology integrator for 2006-2007. The second one is also the middle school. And this is Sarah Kinsella, who has been out on maternity leave. And she plans to return to her physical education position at uh, Cape Elizabeth Middle School in August of 2006. Thank you. Uh, we'll welcome them back. As far as recognition uh, this evening, I'd just like to take a moment to uh, note that uh, our winter athletic teams are heading into quite a few of a variety of um, uh, state finals. So I think the board would like to wish them luck over the next uh, couple weeks in all their contests. I'd also like to note that we have a junior high school student, uh, Lauren Yokobaskis, and we would like to wish her good luck tomorrow. She will be singing in Carnegie Hall and uh, a, a talented singer with some more appearances, uh, from what I understand, uh, throughout the state. But uh, it's quite an honor to be singing there, so we wish her luck. We'll move on to the superintendent's report. Right. Did, uh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'd like to take a moment. Trish, would you like to add something? I just want to publicly <coughs> thank the Cape Elizabeth um, Police Department for their generous donation of about $1,800 spread out throughout to the, the three parents associations um, at the three various schools. I know that the parents associations are appreciative of that. I'm not sure what they're doing at, the, at Pond Cove or the high school yet, but I know at the middle school the money will be put to good use um, to offset the cost of a character education type program. So thank you to the Cape Elizabeth Police for the support of the education and the community. Thank you. Now we'll go on to the superintendent's okay. report. All right. Uh, the first thing, I just am doing several updates this evening. Uh, the first set of updates is on testing. Uh, first of all, the, you all heard me speak about several times the NWEA testing. Uh, what we did uh, this winter is take some time to begin to get familiar with the testing. Uh, it requires uh, certainly some technology work, it requires some proctoring work and all of those things. So our first testing was done on January 31st. It was at Cape Elizabeth High School and it was all ninth graders. Uh, the promise of the testing company came through and the very next day we had the results, the initial results of the testing. Uh, we have been able to get several other sets of results and once we close the window on the testing, uh, all reports will be available to us. Uh, from my perspective as a superintendent, 
re remembering that this is the first time through, uh, very interesting information uh, was gleaned and will continue to be gleaned from this. Uh, what we will be doing is uh, obviously with that type of testing what you need is a couple or three times of students taking it to see the growth that occurs, et cetera. But I think you will all be very pleased when you see the results of the grade nine testing and the number of students who scored at very, very high levels here in, at the ninth, at high, uh, high school, excuse me. Uh, on February 6th, 7th, and 9th, uh, grade five uh, also was tested at the middle school. Uh, again, in both cases, it went extremely smooth. Uh, a lot of work was put in by Gary Lenoy, uh, by Sarah Simmons, by uh, Gary Lenoy's technology people, by the people at the middle school, including Steve and John, and I would be remiss if I didn't mention Kim uh, Sturgeon, who put an enormous amount of work into just scheduling this whole thing. Again, we had immediate results. Again, we recognize the fact these are baseline results and we'll need to get more information as we go along. But it has proven to us that it works, that it can be easily done, that the results come very quickly. And I know in talking with Steve, as he has told me several times, that his fifth, fifth grade teachers are very excited about the information that they've already received and will be receiving more again once we close that window. Yes. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, these were test runs this time. Uh, when do you foresee it becoming part of the testing, the actual testing regiment required by law? And how do you foresee the information being shared with parents? First of all, uh, the continuation of the testing and the spreading of the testing over many different grades will start in the fall. Uh, we're looking at the possibility of doing one more or uh, two more grade levels uh, late spring so that we will have that information to take into fall. Uh, as far as sharing with parents, that's the next step that we're looking at now. We've been talking with several uh, different school systems who have already done NWEA over a short period of time, but over a period of time, and talking about what the best route is in order to share information. Uh, one, of the, one of the concerns I always have with this is that anytime you do testing in a one time like this, it is a snapshot and not the full picture. And so one of the things that we are looking at and we are just beginning to uh, make some determinations as far as looking at other tests we have, how this compares to them, what kind of information it gives us. Uh, but we are looking at how we might share the ninth grade and fifth grade testing we've already done with parents, uh, but are making sure that we're doing it appropriately so that they understand this is a beginning of the process. Uh, secondly on this list is MEA, MEA schedules. Uh, I think you're aware of the fact that the MEA has uh, become much broader. Prior to this, it was always grades 4, 8, and 11. This year, it'll be grades 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Uh, the testing window opens on March 6. We have a two-week opening in that window to, to do this testing. Uh, so that will be coming uh, up very soon and the middle school and Pond Cove are prepared for it, are preparing for it. The high school at this point, as you know, will not be doing MEAs. Instead, what has happened with them is that the state has adopted the SAT as the replacement for the MEA. That SAT will be given on Saturday, April 1st. Uh, therefore, what we have looked at, as many schools across the state have done, is that on Monday, April 3rd, will be a no, no school day for juniors because they did their work on the first and I'm sure they'll consider that. However, one of the things that Jeff suddenly realized several weeks ago and called me about and has been working on is that when the calendar was built last year, the calendar was built around the expectation of doing MEAs. So Jeff has had to do a little uh, shifting. Uh, he has, has worked on that and I know a letter is about to go out to all parents, but Jeff, I, would you mind just speaking to that briefly? We thought we were so smart and finally actually anticipating it um, and, and the laugh is on us. Uh, what we had originally scheduled to do was to have um, March 8th and 9th, which were supposed to be the first couple of days of MEA testing in the high school. We were going to have that um, be late start days for everybody except juniors so that we could test the juniors in an environment that was more conducive to testing. 
Um, that creates some challenges, and as Alan says, I will be getting a letter out to parents by the end of this week uh, anyway. But so you know, my plan is that March 8th, and people are not going to be necessarily happy, and especially some students are going to be disappointed, but on March 8th, we are going to run a regular school day. We will not have a late start school day. That's my intention. Um, then on March 9th, we, but the flip side is <laughs> that on March 9th, we will stick, my plan is to stick with the late start day, but have it be a late start day for everybody. So that everybody will come um, starting at 11 o'clock. And during those few hours, we will be spending some time looking at some literacy, looking at some NWEA results uh, in, a group, in a group way, and doing some other activities and essentially try to take advantage of that time. Um, a teacher reminded me that we had also, um, in anticipating the MEA, screwed up the schedule also for March 13th, but that wasn't a late start day, so I just have to do some period shifting and figure out what we're going to be doing with that day, um, because the high school is in a sort of a set rotation, and once you get off it, it gets, re it gets really sort of interesting. So we're playing with that, but basically March 8th is a regular school day for all students starting at 7.30 in the morning. March 9th is a half day. Students arrive at 11 o'clock, um, and that's all students. And then we will work around that from there. Okay? Jeff, while I have you there, yes. the, other, the other part that I was going to report on briefly is the status of SAT prep. And I know that I uh, talked with Ginger briefly about it last okay. night, and I know you and I had a brief discussion. Would you just uh, a quick update on how that's going? Sure. Um, there was a meeting with parents and students who had indicated an interest in doing some SAT prep through the Achievement Center. Uh, it's essentially a, a product offered by Peterson's at a, quite a discount that parents could not get if they tried to sign up for it themselves. It is not a substitute for um, the in-class experience that's offered through community services. Uh, that absolutely fits a lot of needs um, probably better. Uh, but this is an opportunity for kids at a significantly lower cost. And for some students, because it's quite individualized to those students, for some students, it, 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 it might be something that they seriously want to consider. We had, I think, 18 students and their parents come to that meeting. Or maybe about 13 or 14 came, and there are several others who have uh, signed up to take the course. But it's essentially a course where the students go onto the computer um, on the web. They take a diagnostic test to figure out where they are in terms of the skills required to do well on the SAT. They're then given what's called, I think, a learning path. Um, so they don't have to do all the tutorials that are available, but it's a learning path sort of um, individualized to where they are. They do that learning path, and then they have two or three other exams that they take to sort of measure how their progress is coming along. Um, they also, interestingly, have an opportunity to write an essay, which is scored by computer. Um, a, lot of, um, com a lot of states are actually moving to um, computer-scored essays. They're by no means perfect, and it's a little bit, it's a little bit strange. But uh, they've got a huge database sort of behind them that sort of recognize the characteristics of the kinds of writing that lead to success on tests like the SAT. And the Achievement Center staff is also available to do some review of student essays as well. So it won't be just by computer if students want to take advantage of the Achievement Center staff. So that's it. Sure. The next thing is school budget, uh, school board budget workshop. Oh, excuse me. Can I just ask a quick question on testing? Um, am I correct in assuming we're looking at the NWEA, and I know the pros and con, the pros of that. We've expanded the MEA, and I know we're still doing local assessments, but we, the state has said we can back off. Is at some point, I'm assuming you look at the whole big picture of what we're doing for testing to sort of see how much time our kids are actually being tested vis-a-vis -vis the value of the test results and what we need to do to comply with state regulation? We, we are, will be constantly watching that. I, I will tell you, I, th I don't think I'm saying anything that surprises you. Uh, the MEA still continues to be a real difficult one for us because we will test in March. We will not get results back until July. The nice thing about the NWEA, it gives us immediate response and also the time that it takes to do the NWEA uh, is, is a much shorter time and a much more concentrated time. Uh, my hope, and uh, I don't know whether the state agrees with me or not, but my hope is that eventually the NWEA will replace the MEA across the state uh, in, in doing that. But uh, the way I look at it is that the NWEA, and I think that's feedback I've gotten from a lot of people, does a much better job of helping us to inform instruction. 
and immediate information around instruction. So that's why uh, I think we need to move ahead with that. And again, hoping the state, uh, which this year has increased the number of grades doing the testing, uh, will eventually look at the NWEA as, as what it really needs. That's my bias. Please understand that. Thank you. Any other questions regarding testing? Okay. Okay. okay, going back, uh, school board budget workshops. Uh, Elaine did this a little while ago. I'll just remind again, we have two budget workshops coming up right after vacation on, the, on February 28th, and which will be an evening workshop, and then on March 4th, which is a fairly full day workshop where each cost center manager will present their budgets at that point. Uh, I will tell you, uh, we have been working diligently the administrative team and I looking at the budget. Uh, we have, as of today, reached the point where we are at the 3.4 spending cap. I, will not t I would not be even begin to tell you it has been an easy process. I will not say to you it has been a pleasurable process. Uh, we have had to make some pretty serious inroads uh, as far as supplies, equipment, contracted services are concerned. As of today, Almost all positions, and I say almost all because I, I'm still not sure on a couple, uh, have been preserved. But I'm very clear that this will be the last year that we'll be able to do it with the type of, of cap that we have at this point in time. But we are there, uh, and hopefully as we go through the hearings the next few weeks, you will hear from the cost center managers and from me what was in that had to be cut what it has done to the educational programs in their schools uh, so that you have a very clear understanding of all of that. Uh, the documentation uh, is being put together. Pauline and I talked today. Uh, the, uh, we have another level of documentation that now needs to be put together, including the rationales behind a lot of the issues within the budget. Uh, our hope is, is by the end of this week to have it ready. We will not have budget documents ready for, by Friday. I, will, I can tell you that right now. But we will uh, have them ready as quickly as possible and get in contact with you if you're in town over vacation to get them to you as soon as we possibly can. Um, will any of this information be available on the, the website, the town website? The entire budget, the entire superintendent's proposed budget will go on the website. Uh, Wendy is already working on that to get it up from there. Uh, we will also, I, I, again, uh, checking what historically has been done. We will also have extra copies of the budget when we go to the hearing so the public can pick them up. And we will have them available at Town Hall for those who would like to get them ahead of time. Uh, the look of the budget will be much the same and yet will be different in some ways because what you will see is several columns on the budget which will uh, show uh, the work that the, the DLT did in the beginning to build a budget, what they did with me in their first round of cuts, our first round of cuts, what they did in our second round of cuts, uh, what it looks like to get to a 3.4, and there will also be information there that will tell you what is a superintendent, although I had to cut it, it I felt was absolutely necessary but we just did not have the finances in order to be able to do it. So it, that will be a different look uh, that you will, you will have, and it will be much, uh, I think, much more comprehensive information than you've had as you go into hearing about the budget and go into the debates about uh, accepting a budget. Thank, okay. thank you. High school science program follow-up, I'm just going to speak about it briefly is that you'll remember the high school science people presented two months ago, I think it was, I can't remember for sure. Uh, but anyway, what they talked about was the need uh, for more t science time, particularly for lab time, and their concerns, and showed you some very clear statistics that showed that Cape Elizabeth High School probably has less total science time per class than any system in this area. Uh, with that in mind, uh, I talked with Jeff. Uh, we did put into the budget a, uh, another science teacher which would be necessary in order to do that. Uh, I will be very <coughs> honest with you. 
that, si that new science teacher also disappeared from the budget as we got to this point. Uh, I know Jeff is doing some work around scheduling and things at the high school. I would not ask him to speak to it now because I know he's in the process and in the throes of that. And so, uh, but it is certainly something that is on our minds, uh, as is needs in other areas as well because of class sizes. Um, update on future directions plan. Uh, I'm not going to go very far with this. All I wanted to say from my perspective is that we are moving ahead. Uh, Trish is the chair of that group on strategic planning, and uh, I think she will probably report on it as we go along. Or I don't know if you want to make any comments right now, Trish, but we're really in the beginning stages, and that's basically what I wanted to say to people. Uh, and finally, um, the NEASC report on the high school has been received, the final report. What I'm, I, it is, I, I would tell you right now, it's a very interesting document. It is over, it is 86 pages long. It is a very comprehensive look at our high school uh, based on the standards of the NEASC, based on the work that the high school staff did and presented to them, and based on their observations. Uh, I've read it carefully. Uh, I will tell you that uh, it provides some, uh, what I consider anyway, excellent information. Uh, I have no intention of doing any report about it tonight. I spoke to Jeff about it. I feel very strongly that two things need to happen. I'm going to give you the report tonight uh, so you can have some time to read it, uh, curl up in front of the fire, and uh, spend some, which is what I did Sunday, <laughs> and so, so that you get a chance to read it all. It, has, it is some really interesting insight about some of the wonderful things that are going on at the high school, and I would say to you, too, that a report like this reflects not only the high school, but the education that the students have had from kindergarten through grade 12. It also has some very pointed uh, issues that we will, we will be talking about, one of them being curriculum uh, that we, will, we have been talking about and will continue to talk about. But one of the things I would like to do, uh, would like to establish a time for a workshop where Jeff and some of the members of his NESC NEASC committee can come in and just kind of go over the report. I feel very strong. An enormous amount of work that goes into this deserves some time for the board to really understand what that is. So tonight what I'm going to do is pass these out to you. Uh, you can put them in, the, in your bag to take home with you. But uh, I do want to be sure that you've had the opportunity to uh, take a look at them. I would also say that we will have extra copies. Uh, I will make sure the other administrators get them and we will have some copies for the public as we move along with this. Rebecca has a question. Yes. Um, were we re-accredited? Were we re-accredited? Re yes, we were. <laughs> when, the next step, Jeff, I think, is you have to do some Just work Just wanted first, to make right? sure. Well, well, no, actually, the process still isn't done. The report is done. OK. Um, the report is the report by the visiting committee as it was filtered through the chairperson and some editing people at NEASC. The next step is a vote by the commission. So the commission will take a look at this report along with reports about dozens if not hundreds of other schools in New England. And then the commission will vote on the accreditation. And when does that happen? It happens this spring. I honestly don't remember. May, May sticks in my mind. Okay. Um, but it's so at this point, um, we don't know, but are certainly optimistic. Okay. Well, I'd like to say congratulations, Jeff, on a job well done for your staff and yourself and the rest of the administrators. I know it took up a lot of time in planning and accommodating groups. So thank you, and, and I look forward to the thank vote. You. I'm sure the rest of the board will. Pass that along. Great. Um, thank you very much. Um, at this point, we would like to welcome um, our middle school report tonight with Steve Connolly and our, our new art teacher. Good evening. I'd like to uh, introduce you, Marguerite Lala Rohner. Part of what we do will be on the uh, will be on the projector, and the, the starting information will be just by our conversations. I'd like to say that uh, Marguerite and I started at school just about the same time this year. We share some common roots. 
We share con common concerns. I'm very concerned about the main learning results. She's so concerned her initials are MLR. So, <laughs> huh? That's right. Mm -hmm. You're right. She had to find the Mr. Roner. She had to find somebody with an R. So anyways, uh, Marguerite and I hit it off right away because uh, she thinks that I'm some kind of closet artist. And I've explained to her that I have an appreciation for people who have artistic talent. And I certainly love the work that the students produce. As, uh, as I've gone about the school, what I've noticed is that there are two main focuses that I hear mostly from parents and I hear from teachers and I, I hear in conversations at administrative levels as well that the focus in the system on academics and on athletics. And I think those are great, but we're going to really promote that third A, the arts at the school and I look at things like our belief statements, uh, the abilities and talents of students that are, uh, all students have abilities and talents that are worthy of being recognized and developed. And uh, some of our information about the learning communities, a wide range of, of learning opportunities must be provided in order for our students and staff to be successful. So I think Marguerite fits very nicely into this picture because I'm very impressed with her energy and her commitment to projects and to taking on quite a bit more than any one person can possibly chew at one time. So I, uh, I keep throwing ideas out to her and then I say, okay, now Marguerite, let's, let's moderate that a little bit here. You can't do it all at the same time. So uh, as, as we both entered the school, I think the first thing that struck me was upon entering the middle school, you come into the archway and, and you, it's, a, it's an attractive setting right there, but you look to the right and there's a nicely colored hall that leads down to Pond Cove and there are pretty signs and so forth. And then you're standing in this sort of atrium looking around going, okay, there's a sign over here about this big that says middle school that way. You got 110 feet of hallway upon entering the school before you find signs of a living person. It reminds me of the the cowardly lion on the stretch going down to Oz, going in to see the wizard. I'm looking for a window to dive out of somewhere. So uh, it, it's really uh, quite a blank area. And uh, when I left the school in 96, that was the first time, that was the first year we'd been in the new facility. And that's the same way the building looked when I left. So uh, it didn't sit right. So the first thing I did was I went down to see Marguerite introduce myself. We talked about some projects. Uh, I got some background information, uh, kind of shared some other things that I've been doing. So we talked back and forth. And I said, you know, there's this area of the school. It's 110 feet. And I'm mathematically oriented. So yes, I did count. There are 110 tiles in that hall. And uh, I just said, you know, you really don't have enough display space here. And I've got this place. She said, oh, yeah, you know, that's that long, empty hallway outside the calf. Boy, I've got some plans for that one. So as we talked, we kind of find out, found out that our plans were really one and the same. So um, I'm going to let Marguerite do a little bit of talking first about some pieces, and I'll chime in whenever about that hallway, and then we'll move on to other sections of the school. Good evening. Um, what Steve was talking about, the hallway by the cafeteria, when he and I spoke, we also took it further and wrote a grant to SEAF asking for display cases that would home, highlight student work of all grade levels because we are five through eight, and that we'd also have gallery lighting so it could show off the work. We'd have a permanent art collection and that we would have rotating exhibits that would be student-centered, meaning if you have a student who would like to step up to the plate, they would have the ability to have a show in that space. The other parts of the building that we've looked at, and one part we have started, is the seventh grade wing. This fall, the seventh grade team wrote a grant to the Middle School Parent Association, and we were awarded $1,000 for mural making. The way we've approached the murals is we go to Camp Kiev for a week, and that week I took digital photographs of the landscape, and then students chose as a group which ones they'd like to portray. 
In the, um, each one of you have a packet that has photographs of where we are right now with the murals. The second trimester, I have three groups of approximately 22 students each in them. They work, as, as they work within groups of five or four. Their job was to grid the digital image and enlarge it on paper. And the purpose of this is just to organize the space and to make like an organ, organizational map to go on the wall. Once we were in the hallway, they gridded the hallway also. And Steve is correct when he said he's very mathematical because I was telling him the measurements and he came back to tell me they weren't right. And it's like, no, as an artist, you've got to see the big picture. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Once the paint's on, you don't see the grid and no one will know other than Steve Conley. <laughs> Um, so the function of a grid is just to, so the student is able to use their math skills and enlarge what they see from a five by seven format to a large wall space. They're working cooperatively and individually. The beauty of it is we don't know how it, it will come out because we haven't done it before. I haven't done it before and that's the exciting part of it because you do have to trust the process. The paints that we're able to buy are professional grade paint and the only way I can compare it is the difference between eating a generic brand of food and something a chef has prepared for you. We're using the chef preparation. The paints are archival, they will last forever and the traditional way we're painting, I should say the students, I'm not painting on their work, they paint the work, I have a prototype in the classroom that I show them how to build up. They're using burnt sienna, they're painting after the line drawings, they laid down a monochromatic one color value scale of the burnt sienna landscape. This is traditional, it's from the Renaissance, and it's how every art student learns in art school how to paint. You go dark to light, big space to small space. They're learning it, and the learning curve is a lot different than teaching adults. They grasp it within a one period class, they flounder, and that's the class that's like, ugh, what have I done? Then the next class, they're fluent in the medium, and they're able to tell each other and paint fluidly together. So our goal is to get these murals completed this trimester. There are five of them. And then we'll varnish them so they do stay clean. The next trimester, we'll have five new murals for my third trimester seventh graders. Then we'll have a gala opening where you're all invited to see the work. The benefits of having student-centered activities surrounding the school, it makes it more inviting. When you think of it as their home away from home, what would be more welcoming than work for students made by students? The other component is I've never had so many students come up to me or adults talking about the murals. They are the talk of the school. and. The, the reference there is that they have to go to talk to the students about it. They're not my paintings, it's the student work. So this is how we have collaborated. We envision changing the direction of the school and making it more the home away from home. And also making it a place where all learning is encouraged and it does spill over into other subject area and it's just as important. So that's my deal. We talked. Quite, quite a bit at length about the lack of the, you, you could walk through the halls and pretty much get a feeling that there was a lack of ownership of the building by the students because of the, the black marks and so forth halfway up in the wall with somebody go running down to kick off a wall. So as I talked with Marguerite about that, and she said, well, I'm going to teach them how to paint on the wall. I was like, you, are you helping me here? So uh, you, you've got to stop by the school and see the murals in the progression. It's really fascinating stuff to see. So we're going to have this 110 foot hallway that's going to have a develop, developing art gallery. We want to have some uh, gala events. We're going to have unveilings of artwork from students. We're going to have uh, arts nights on those same nights where we invite students who are playing maybe non-traditional band instruments in to um, to perform and that we'll invite the chorus to sing in an area or we'll have Mr. Uh, Mr. White and some of his jazz band students do a performance. So enlivening the school with the arts. 
and uh, then we'll have the mural component and then the last piece is um, what I you know I'm not exactly sure what we're going to call the last piece because it, this will just take a minute to warm up because it's uh, it's this strangely walled in section of land that it's about another 110 by about 40 feet. It's a good size area and it's grassed in. I remembered seeing that and thinking when I was teaching science up on the second floor, the eighth grade, the, the year that I left, thinking, boy, that would make for a really good you know, this or that for, for science and so forth. And well, once again, 10 years later, I'm looking at the same Graston area. But the way that it was brought to my attention that, oh yeah, we have that odd little piece of real estate in there, was I saw uh, a former student working for Public Works wheeling a lawnmower through the halls. <laughs> Where are you going with that thing? So I got to mow that area. I thought it'd be easier to stake out a goat or something like that, but uh, <laughs> apparently not. I think you have to feed them and we don't have a budget for that. So. Um, what uh, I talked with Chris Turner, who is the technology teacher. Now, uh, Chris unfortunately was not able to be here with us tonight, but he left me plenty of good materials that he's working with the students to display to you. Uh, the students in the seventh and eighth grade are working with a program called ARCHICAD, so it's an architectural computer assisted drafting and design uh, programming element that he's built up quite a bit of work with. They've gone from kitchens to some things that you'll see here. Give me just one second. Um, Mr. Hawkins, would it be possible the, the last two light switches on the right in that space? I think will help us out a little bit. Thank you. Okay, so I didn't know, were we going to call it the mall, the grassy knoll? I think we already had one of those, the courtyard. The courtyard works for me. Well, so here's this very large area that's not really usable because it doesn't pass fire code. Now, as I looked at that, I said, well, how much would it take to bring this up to fire code? You'd be surprised how little, I mean, anything from creating a hinge system on a window section to, okay, let's have a doorway put in. But if that's what's holding this facility up, then that's a small thing. So um, in talking with Mr. Turner and also in continuing conversations with Marguerite, well, I'm trying to keep her sane this year and not overburden her, um, we were thinking about, you know, what could that space be out there? What if we had students in, in the CAD programming, in the tech part of the shop tech program, what if they were developing what that area could be? And so kids have been using the CAD to come up with some ideas. So they've uh, envisioned putting in, this particular student um, uh, has envisioned putting in uh, raised beds, putting in some kind of a greenhouse area that could be used by the uh, science classrooms, and then also the walkways. Now the walkways, interestingly enough, we've talked about, now there's an opportunity to endow the arts at our school. What if we sold engraved bricks? There's more, plenty, plenty more ideas coming. Uh, this is another example that a student had because part of the conversation with Marguerite was what if we had three-dimensional um, durable art that was part of the focus of that, of that facility, something that would represent the work that did, they're doing in the fifth grade, the sixth grade, the seventh grade, and so forth. We can't exactly figure out how to put a full-size whale in there for the fifth grade, but there are more ideas coming. I, I'm just fascinated that a seventh or eighth grade student was able to do this kind of work. Um, the information that was passed on to me is, no, the lights are just for effect. We really wouldn't need those, and that would be added cost. But what if it was an area that you could actually use in the, in, in, during good weather for advisory groups to go outside or for a class to go out and do a study of artistic pieces that were there or to do some of their science work? Uh, this is looking the full length of the courtyard from the lobby up towards the 1930s building. And this is another student's idea about a greenhouse with uh, some glass atria at the top of that. And his is a uh, flyby. I hope everyone brought Dramamine today. Uh, 
is one view. Let me back that up just a little bit. Now, go forward. Another rendition by a different student. <laughs> Told you. <laughs> the roof section isn't done on here yet, but the rest is. So I think, uh, all in all, we have some really good opportunities for bringing more life to the school, giving students ownership of that, and turning it into a facility that really emphasizes the arts. Most construction in the state, when you begin it, you have a couple of different choices if you're receiving major state dollars. One is either use $25,000 for the contribution to the arts to be done for the facility or 1% of the construction. Ours was done with local dollars. So you'll notice if you go to other schools, visit, visit, uh, visit uh, Brunswick High School and look at the, the, the four themes, earth, earth, wind, fire. I mean, the themes that they have around the hallways and the, the, the painted uh, poles that look like birch trees and so forth. It's a magnificent facility to walk through and it really isn't gonna take us that much over time to start converting this school into something that uh, we've kind of envisioned our own little art center and, and art colony out there. So the Cape Elizabeth Middle Colony. Okay, questions for us? Ann? Oh, sorry, <laughs> looking over here. I, I, um, I know uh, the funds to do this, I mean, CEEP had granted you the monies for the, for the, the murals. Mm -hmm. No, CEEP had, and it was the middle school. Uh, MSPA. MSPA gave us the money for the murals. We've applied for the money spread the hallway. We haven't heard. As we joined the school, and we knew there was a round of CEEP grants coming up, but we were still new to the community, we didn't realize that which grant cycle happens in the fall and which one happens yes. later on in the year. So we're still going to be putting forward our ideas to see. And then we're also, I, I, I was not really being facetious about the bricks for an endowing, uh, endowments for the arts, and I uh, thir certainly think that there are many opportunities out there to be looking for grant opportunities. Uh, you know, in some cases we might say that we're not the, the typical community that receives major grant dollars, but I think in this, under this topic, we could be in for some opportunities. I, I'd, I'd like to just, do you have any more questions? Anyone else? Um, I'd like to just thank you for coming and sharing those ideas. I, I, I like Ann, and I'm sure the rest of the school board are excited to see those types of programs in our schools. Um, I'd also like to just comment that um, there are a lot of times that school board members feel um, that there are some rooms in this particular building that are also our home away from home. <laughs> <laughs> and I've had discussions in the past with some of the other principals, but we have a room uh, called the Jordan Conference Room, and I think that for at least the last six years I have looked at the same picture on the wall, which is kind of a a painting without any frame on it that's kind of, you know, crumpled on the edges. And I've spoken with Alan and Michael McGovern at the town uh, hall here and have received um, a go-ahead to, to talk with perhaps some of the art teachers, not only at the middle school, but at Pond Cove and at the high school, to see if we could get some sort of rotation of some uh, of great student art. And it wouldn't be just for the school board, but it would also be for the many other groups that meet in that building, I mean, in that particular room. And it would be a great chance for them to see our students work if they can't get into the schools. So um, I'm hoping that we can get 
again, some frames uh, so that we could protect their work so we could get it back to them. Sounds good to me. I'm sure it'll sound good, great to the students and the other art teachers. I, I think that would be fun. Thank you. <laughs> great. Thank you, Thank you very much. Great. Alan has, has pointed out that we missed something back in communication, so we're just going to skip back to number six before we get into the committee reports at this time. Just qu very quickly, in your packets, I believe they were in your mailboxes upstairs, you received a, a pamphlet on Cape Robotics. You remember that Evan Thayer was here a couple of months ago to show uh, some of the work they were doing. Uh, Evan is... Uh, to say he's excited about this is perhaps an understatement. Am I, am I correct? Yes. Uh, Evan has, is really moving ahead with this and would like to move it to middle school as soon as possible. Would like to get middle school kids involved. Would also like to get his kids involved in some regional uh, competition. And he talks about one in Hartford, Connecticut. So uh, Evan has come up with this brochure, which you have, and which will be available to the public. And one part of this is to begin to look for some sponsorships for the robo robotics program. And so this will be used also to sell some of the sponsorships, which can be anywhere from 20, well, it could be from $1 on. But uh, they have some levels of $25 for pinion gear, $150 is the spur gear, and $500 is the crown gear, the three, are <laughs> three areas. And so I did want to be sure to mention this because uh, I talk with Evan frequently about this. I know how excited he is, and I know how excited he is to get this moving further. And uh, for me personally, uh, recently I was talking to a doctor I've been going to who has a son at uh, Falmouth who is in the robotics program. And he said his son had never been turned on to anything until he got involved with that. And I think it's extremely important that we recognize that this offers some opportunities for many kids, some who just don't get turned on to something else. This does the work for them. Kevin, I stole that from you, but I just, it suddenly dawned on me I hadn't mentioned it, and I did want to be sure I did do that. Thank you. Um, at this point, we'll uh, move on to uh, our committee reports, and we'll start off with the Finance Committee and Kathy Ray. It would be Rebecca. Oh, that's right, it's just listed here. Um, we're still on the old schedule. I'm sorry, Rebecca, I was going by the. Can you back that chocolate? <laughs> Just kidding. Um, Finance Committee has had three meetings since we last were sitting here in the chambers. Our first one was on January 20th. That was our regular Finance Committee meeting. We reviewed the um, monthly energy report and the monthly food service report. Um, the negative student amount as of the 20th stood at 5,900, which was down from 7,700. Some of that decrease reflects the forgiveness of one family's debt, which is experiencing some difficult times. And there are three students with overdue amounts larger than 40, so most of that is just a lot of little bit of, little bit of money was spread out among a lot of people. Um, so I think um, uh, the administration is looking into the feasibility of generating emails by linking the food system data with PowerSchool as another way of reaching um, parents. Uh, in response to a citizen's inquiry, uh, Pauline was explained that the new student ID system for the food service cost uh, under $4,000. The old system required ordering new, two new cards each year for students, which totaled roughly $2,000. So the payback on the new system is um, roughly two years. The committee agreed that it would be worth writing a position statement for board approval in response to the main House Majority Leader Glenn Cummings, but we had further discussion, decided that maybe we should have a conversation with some of our representatives um, Senate, uh, up in Augusta. Um, I have contacted them, and I have, uh, well, I've contacted Lynn Bromley, and she was trying to set up a meeting with Connie, and I have not heard back, and that was over a month ago. So I think they're trying to gauge how serious this really is in terms of whether we need to get really excited about this or not. So um, obviously I need to follow up on that. <clears throat> the, uh, 
the committee discussed the agenda for the finance workshop on, 120, on the 24th of January. And we have asked Claire to speak to the board regarding the new special education law regarding out of district students attending private schools in the district. Um, and she will, uh, she could not be here tonight, but she agreed to speak to us on that in the March meeting. We had a subsequent meeting, um, okay, I didn't, February 2nd, I believe. Uh, at 8.30 and another one on the 24th at 12.30 and both of these meetings were regarding specific issues on the, on the budget process and working with Alan on, on some issues and, and documentation. And oh, our next meeting I believe is on here so I'm just going to turn this over. So, uh, well, our next meeting, okay. tomorrow? Should be tomorrow. Yeah, it's, it's Should be Wednesday. Wednesday. <laughs> Wednesday at um, that's tomorrow morning at 8:15 in the superintendent's office to once again discuss the 2006-2007 budget. Then we have our regular our regular finance committee meeting on Tuesday, February 28th at 12:30. So I want to thank the finance committee members for all the time that they've been putting in. It's been Quite robust. Thank you. Um, the planning committee, Trish? The planning committee met on um, January 30th. We discussed ways that the committee could work more closely with the finance committee, but on the, another item on their agenda. <laughs> agreed, we agreed that the future direction plan now in its fifth year of its five year life um, needed to be updated, as that Alan mentioned. And the action teams that were formed initially around each of the plan's goals will be regrouped or reformed as needed depending on personnel changes. Um, and the action teams will be working with Alan and then report back to the planning committee with a status update. We will meet again once all those action teams have met and had a chance to present their work. So no um, meeting date has been set yet. Great, thank you. Uh, policy, Ann. Uh, the policy committee met on February 6th. And um, there are actually five policies that we discussed that will be presented later this evening for first reading. So I don't think that I'll really take the time. I can just go through them at that point and mention any things that are really different. The two items, the, the two policy areas that we did discuss um, that aren't going to be presented later this evening. The first is IHOA, which is field trips and excursions. And Jeff um, was. Uh, kind enough to, to draft a revision for us. There are a number of changes that in reviewing that policy we felt we needed to make and um, we're going to be taking some more time to look at that in more detail at our next meeting. And the other area are the um, school bus related policies which Sue Weatherby was kind enough to take time to review and come to our meeting and present and um, in talking about those we realized that there's some other questions that we need to look into and that Sue wanted to review and so she will be doing that and coming back with those also next month. Um, one of the things we're trying to do is to ask different administrators or various board committees to um, take pieces of um, sec sections, policy sections or specific policies and review those within their own um, committees or with their own staff to kind of just move the whole process along a little bit quicker towards getting to the end of the uh, review of the policy manual. That's it. Thank you, Ann. Uh, Trish, would you like to speak towards the substance abuse policy review subcommittee? Sure. Um, the committee met on February 8th. We spent a lot of time talking about the consequences, which specifically would be re relate to a violation occurring when a student hosts a party where illegal substances are present. We did not come to any conclusive decision and sort of took a, an alternate route. We decided it was probably time to um, form two smaller subcommittees. We've done a lot of work on the committee and we sort of thought that it's time to regroup um, and sort of chart our progress. One of the subcommittees will look at um, the parent student potential parent student education programs which in the areas of substance abuse and the second group will begin to draft a policy which reflects the committee's recommendations and work to date. 
Um, those will be meeting, and then we'll report back to the full subcommittee uh, at our next meeting on March 2nd at 8 a.m. Thank you. Um, we'll move on to personnel committee with Kathy. I'll take this one this time. Okay, thank you. Um, the personnel committee met on January 26th. Um, we continued to um, review job descriptions, which are coming in from various groups. Um, and tweaking those, um, we've taken a look at some of the job descriptions and we're trying to put them into the same format so that regardless of which departments they're coming from, they're in the same type of format. Um, and everyone's taking a look at the different um, um, job descriptions to maybe add um, or subtract or ask questions that, that uh, continue to um, sort of um, change them a little bit. So we've sent them back and forth. Um, we do have some that the personnel committee has approved um, as the personnel committee and we'll be feeding those to the full school board um, to take a look at and um, review. Um, we had, um, let's see, Pauline had given us um, some of her job descriptions which she had worked on before and she um, uh, made some changes to. Keith Weatherby had um, brought in some of his job descriptions and um, had sent them back. Um, to put them in the same format, and I think I just got those on email the other day. Um, Sue Weatherby um, has part of what she was doing in her office, was working on job descriptions for everyone there, um, which is a, a large job, including um, trying to um, uh, make a job description for what she does and what that position could look like in the future, um, and she's going to take um, maybe one or two months to get those back since it's a, that's a big job. Um, we ha have started looking at substitute pay um, per uh, request. Um, we are setting that aside just for the moment um, because it uh, dovetails in with the budget and um, we need to, that needs to be considered as part of the budget process. Um, and we also um, distributed but didn't get a chance to um, discuss the negotiations policy, which we said we would look at for the policy committee. So uh, when we meet again, which is March something, um, we will be reviewing that, um, that policy um, and making a recommendation back to the policy committee. Um, our next meeting is March 27th at 1 p.m. Great. Uh, Rebecca, communications? We have not met. We are on a every three month schedule, but I would like to say congratulations to Alan and Patty McCarthy for a lovely edition of The View. It arrived in people's homes today, or at least in my home today. So check your mailboxes. I'm sure it's there. Um, I know a lot of work went into this uh, from administrator, administrator staff and um, Alan and Patty and, uh, and Mary was and Mary. very instrumental in And Mary. Stuff. So, um, well, job well done. And thank you for the articles by, by Trish and Rebecca and school board members. <coughs> so, uh, I look forward to it. So. Thank you. Um, ex uh, student Extracurricular Committee, Kevin. Yes, we met in our uh, last meeting was at the end of January. And uh, the primary discussion uh, revolved around sports done right and beginning an implementation program in Cape Elizabeth. What we are doing right now is gathering information. Um, the, what I refer to as our sports professionals, uh, Keith Weatherby, Sue Weatherby, and Scott Labby have held independent meetings uh, with themselves gathering information, one of the things we're looking at is uh, the question of what do we do right, what needs some tweaking, and uh, what needs a lot of work in terms of meeting the, uh, some of the sports done right criteria. We're also contacting local schools who are original sites for sports done right to see what their experience has been over the last, uh, I believe it's a year since that's, that's begun. And uh, finally, Alan suggested, and uh, we all thought it was a uh, particularly good idea, to investigate something called the Captain's Academy, which I believe is happening up in the uh, Lewiston-Auburn area. Um, so 
I don't know whether or not Alan's had an opportunity to look into that. Uh, certainly budget uh, precedes the need to do this. We are looking to do something, uh, an opening uh, series of events in September, and we will report on those as uh, plans are developed. Uh, we will not be meeting again until March 21st. Um, uh, one of our members has, uh, has an issue which takes them out of, uh, out of the picture for a while. Uh, so we will meet on, our next meeting will be March 21st, but information will be exchanged uh, between now and then uh, via email. Great, thank you. Uh, Rebecca, do you have anything to report in regards to the legislative liaison job? No, just what I said earlier under the Finance Committee. Okay, great. Um, I'd like to just take a moment, um, uh, as we all probably heard over the news and in the newspaper uh, yesterday and today, that the Cape Elizabeth Education Foundation has been, had very good news. Uh, they met last night, they had a board of directors meeting, but the big news, of course, is the fact that the uh, Beach to Beacon 10K that will be being run on August 5th uh, has announced, uh, along with uh, Bank North, um, uh, that SEEF will be the beneficiary of the proceeds of that race this year, which is a, a total of uh, approximately $30,000, in addition to some fundraising and publicity activities that are valued at another additional $40,000. Um, the community should be very excited and honored to be uh, chosen to be the recipient of this and consequently the school department is an indirect beneficiary also because we work uh, so closely with CEF uh, to provide some of those innovative things that fall outside of our school budget. So I thought that was tremendous news. It will help them in building their endowment uh, and um, I would just like to thank CEF for the hard work uh, in, in having us considered to be the recipient. Um, I will move on to uh, the PATH's General Advisory Committee report. Um, PATH is moving along nicely, a lot of exciting things happening. Uh, coincidental to receiving the Cape Robotics um, pamphlet tonight, uh, one of the programs that uh, PATH is looking at is, in fact, robotics. Um, so I'm rather excited about that. I think the folks over at PATH are as well. And hopefully, uh, we may be introducing a program on that shortly. Our small engine repair or marine engine repair program uh, began in January and is moving along nicely. And finally, um, the uh, past constitution, which this school board um, approved uh, at, a, at an earlier meeting, is being distributed to all sending schools electronically and the vote uh, of the rest of the schools will be held uh, electronically to do that. That's it for PASS for tonight. Very good, thank you. I'd just like to take a moment um, and, and give a short report on the building committee. Um, as most of you, I think, have received a, a, a copy of a, uh, the minutes of our last building committee meeting since our last business meeting. Uh, I would like to just note that at that meeting, the building committee came up with a list of ad alternates that were original components of the building project. They prioritized them with the help of um, Jeff and Ernie McBain and Alan's recommendations. Most of the work that's going to be included with some of the remaining funds involve ventilator replacements. Uh, you know, rebuilding HVAC units, uh, hot water heater, uh, that wasn't included, but the ATM room unit ventilator, marker and tack boards. I won't take you through it. I would just like to make note, though, that uh, one of the items in the replacement was a $15,000 uh, donation towards the traffic light at the end of the high school driveway, which the town council had asked for us to make some sort of uh, donation to that. And that would be coupled with approximately $40,000 in bond interest savings that came from the building bond that will now go also towards the town to be used for that traffic light. Um, we'd also discussed an open house for the high school. 
to be completed. Um, we decided that we would do that most likely in September or October, tie it in with a, a high school event, um, perhaps something like homecoming, that all the exterior work would be finished and the landscaping, and we would have a, hopefully a good turnout rather than trying to squeeze it in in mud season. So anyways, uh, we'll be, have more information then. So. I, I, I. <coughs> I missed a very important piece of my report. If I might go back to the extracurricular for one moment. And that is one piece of business that the extra, extracurricular activity undertook was the review of the athletic budget for the 2006-2007 uh, school year, which comes in at less than it was in the prior year, but also includes a uh, $5 increase in the student fees participation fees. Um, the committee looked at that unanimously, uh, is unanimously recommending to the full board and the finance committee um, our approval of that budget. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the town's comprehensive plan committee, they, have, they are meeting actually this Thursday evening. Um, the next meeting after that will be April 27th, and that will be when the school board uh, will make a, um, a, I'm gonna call it a presentation, but they will be discussing public facilities uh, and some of the school programming, and we've been um, invited to give input at that meeting at that time, so we will be writing something um, to be submitted possibly into the town comprehensive plan at that time. Uh, unfinished business, we're all set. I think that's it. We'll move on to new business, uh, which would be the consideration of the superintendent's recommendation for athletic fee positions. I have two. The first one is from Scott Labby uh, at the middle school. Uh, new coaching nominations are for Chris Drake for middle school swimming, Tracy Weatherby for middle school indoor track assistance. Also, returning coaches are Joe Doan for middle school indoor track, Charlie Carroll for middle school indoor track. Anne-Marie Dion for middle school indoor track assistant, and Robert Yokovaskis, did I do that right? Yeah, you did. For middle school Nordic skiing. Do I have a, a motion to accept those recommendations? <clears throat> I move that we accept the superintendent's recommendations for the athletic fee positions at the middle school. A second. Thank you, Kathy. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? 7-0. Second one I have is uh, for, from Keith Weatherby, and this is spring coaching at the high school level. Uh, they are uh, Todd Day, Varsity Baseball, John Henriksen, Varsity Baseball, Sam Coughlin, JV Softball, Kerry Curtis, Assistant Softball Coach, Ben Raymond, Varsity Boys Lacrosse, Terry Long, JV Boys Lacrosse, Charlie Carroll, assistant boys lacrosse. Sarah Kinsella, uh, vari uh, variety, yes. Varsity girls lacrosse. Kurt Chapin, assistant girls lacrosse. David Weatherby, outdoor track head coach. Doug Worthley, outdoor track assistant coach. Mark Joyce, outdoor track assistant coach. Paul Snyder, outdoor track assistant coach. Andy Strout, head coach tennis team. And Ben Putnam, assistant tennis coach. Do I have a motion to accept the superintendent's recommendations? Rebecca, thank you. Will it be a second? Trish, uh, any questions or discussion? I just want to note that a uh, question for you. Um, where it says boosters, that is to assuming that the boosters are paying for that position? I would assume that's true. That's for Charlie Carroll as assistant boys lacrosse and uh, Kurt Chapin as uh, assistant girls lacrosse. I am assuming they're paid for by boosters. Or is that possibly a shared position, which has been something else that's done in the past? A shared position? Two coaches sharing one salary. Well, I just didn't know there, there's a reference uh, on the sheet that says boosters on it. And I was wondering. Usually when it says that on the sheet, it means the boosters cover the cost. They're paying for it, but we approve it. But um, OK, great. Any other questions? All those in favor? 
Uh, consideration of policies for first reading. The, for the first two policies I think we can, we can take together. <clears throat> Um, FA facilities development goals and FB facilities planning. There are no changes that the committee is recommending on those. Are there any questions or thoughts? No. That's it. Okay, the next one is IKD, which is honorable. <laughs> um, we had, a, I think, a really good discussion on this. As a lot of people will remember, this was an issue that was raised last year by um, some middle school parents and we brought forward Steve brought forward some comments that had come through him and a couple of emails that parents had sent to the school board were were looked at and you know considered and um, as it stands now for people who don't have the policy in front of them at home our current policy is that our honor roll is for grades 6 through 12 um, <clears throat> one of the thing what the, the major change that's being recommended here is that we start the honor roll in grade seven. And so the discussion really was around um, the differences between fifth and sixth grades as opposed to seventh and eighth in regards to the honor roll. We also discussed it as it pertains to the high school in a, in a different way. Um, and, we, and we did discuss a little bit about high honors versus honors. And is that something that we want to keep that distinction? And in fact, we are proposing that we keep that as is for, um, for the revised policy. So those are really the, um, the, the gray change is the major change in this. Okay. Oh. I thought we were going to strike that last sentence, define a student as an honor roll student. She's right. Yeah, you're right, Trish. Yeah. They're going to do that. Okay. Yeah, thanks for catching that. <clears throat> um, okay, the next one is ICAA, which is religious holidays. Um, this is something that we've been looking at for several months. It's gone through many, many revisions, um, large and small. And we have passed this by a variety of different people, including Drummond Woodson, our legal counsel. Um, what we have finally come back to and what the committee is recommending tonight is that we actually keep the policy that we currently have, and um, as is with no changes. Anything? And then um, the last one is it, uh, JLCD administering medication to students. And I want to thank um, Polly Harris and Julie Salikas. They spent a lot of time working on this. I think, Alan, maybe with you uh, to, to revise and work on this policy. They, they have put a lot of time yeah. into this and checked state law several times. Mm -hmm. In terms of the, the new state requirements and how to best fit that into our own school district and they've come to a couple of meetings and have worked together on on revising this and we appreciate all the time that they've spent on that any questions on that one and just a question is this um this is our policy do we also have guidelines that go along with this uh, i been trying to recall because this, this sort of looks like it's a combination of a policy and guidelines, and I wasn't sure. If I may speak. I don't, oh, sure. Yeah. What we will do is once the policy has been approved, then we'll be working on the guidelines that will go with it uh, for the use of, in the schools themselves. Thanks. And uh, that's it. Okay, great. Um, so those are done for first reading, so they'll be up uh, our next meeting for second readings. Uh, consideration of the superintendent's nominations uh, to administrative positions for 2005-06. Uh, first of all, that, that should be changed to 2006-2007. Thank you. What you have in front of you is a document uh, for a nomination of uh, administrators who have been on board for at least two years. I want to be very clear on that. 
uh, that th these are the administrators who are uh, people who have been here for at least two years. The law requires that by March 1st that I inform them if there is any uh, issue around renewal or non-renewal of their contracts. What I am bringing to you tonight is the nomination of those, those uh, administrators who, again, have been here for at least two years. Uh, I have, am in the process of evaluation. What I do is go back over the evaluation process and take a look at them and find that at this point in time, all of these people are doing well in the evaluation process. One of the things that I will be coming back to talk about as far as evaluation goes is like my own evaluation, uh, being a new superintendent on board, et cetera, we probably need to take a, a look at an 18-month cycle so we can get on the same cycles when we have to do this. But uh, it gives me pleasure to nominate the following people for uh, a contract uh, and a renewal of their contract, and that is Tom Eismeyer, Pond Cove School, Jeff Shedd, uh, Cape Elizabeth High School, uh, John Casey, Middle School, Mark Tinkham at the High School, and District Ride Paulina Portria, Business Manager Gary Lenoy, Technology Coordinator, Sarah Simmons, Facilitator of Professional Development Curriculum, Keith Weatherby, 0.75 Athletic Administrator, and Sue Weatherby, Community Services Director. Uh, you'll note at the bottom, I uh, give you the reference to Maine State Law, and also note that people who have been employed for less than two years, I must give them notice by April 1st. And so I'll return with that at the March 14th meeting. Do I have a motion to accept the superintendent's recommendations? So moved. Thank you, Kevin. A second? Trish? Um, any discussion? Being none, all those in favor? Be 7-0. Consideration of a proposal from the high school boys lacrosse team for out-of-state travel. Uh, you have the document in front of you. I'm going to be very honest with you. I don't know a lot about this, uh, but I will go over it with you, and hopefully Jeff may know a little more about it. Uh, this is Cape Elizabeth boys lacrosse. Uh, the request is made by Ben Raymond, their coach. It is a proposed trip from 420.06 to 423.06. Uh, to Seattle, Washington, and Mercer Island High School. Uh, means of transportation is by plane. Destination is Seattle, Washington, and the cost will need to pay the flight approximately $300 per traveler. Mercer Island is planning to house, feed, and transport us while we are there. They are also paying $3,000 towards the cost for our flight, which will reduce the price of travel approximately $100 per traveler. Total cost of travel is $200. Uh, the, uh, yeah, the lacrosse boosters had the bottle shed for the month of January and should be able to assist in the cost for travelers that uh, need assistance. Uh, supervision will be three coaches and possibly their wives and probably at least three parents as well. And all members of the varsity lacrosse team will have the opportunity to make the trip. Uh, I will note for you, as, as we have discussed before, that this falls within the purview of our insurance and reliability insurance, uh, but will need your approval. Uh, again, I apologize. I had not seen this prior to tonight's meeting and have not had a chance to talk with Ben Raymond. And I don't know whether Jeff has any more information on that or not, but it looks like he's shaking his head as well. Since this is, I would, I would make one last comment. Since this is an April trip, uh, and since I feel that I need a little more information to be sure that I'm uh, clear on this, if you want to give uh, initial approval with the understanding that the superintendent will return with any other questions or information you have or he has, uh, I would be more than willing to do that. I, I do know a little bit about it, okay, good. but not, I mean, I certainly don't know everything, but I, I think it's a, uh, my, uh, my understanding is that it's a, um, it's a tournament that um, different schools are invited to. It's been mainly a West Coast tournament, and um, they're reaching out to East Coast schools that have um, played lacrosse for a long time. And um, so it's exciting to be invited to a whole different region of the country to play. And um, I think that there are also some different groups that are contributing. The indoor lacrosse program has had um, actually has some money left over from the winter season that they're going to be donating to help fund some of this. 
if it's approved. Thank you. I would certainly suggest that we conditionally approve that, as Alan suggested. Um, the people involved uh, know what they're about. Um, ben Raymond has been coaching for many, many years. Um, highly respected coach as well. Um, so I would certainly, uh, if it's appropriate at this time, I would move to approve the trip pending uh, additional information to the superintendent's satisfaction. Would there be a second? Second. Thank you. Any further questions? I have one question. Um, I'm not sure I'm clear, and maybe we don't know the answer, but there is no cost to the school department for this trip. Is that correct? No, the no, cost? My understanding, yeah. no, that that would come from individuals and from the Boosters Club. Thank you. And also, I think it did say in here, didn't it, that Mercer right. High School is also providing some money. Thank you. <clears throat> I guess I also just have another question. There, the, the dates of the proposed trip are only three days. It, 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 I'm assuming that must be three days of the for the tournament and a travel for each. It's each two, end. yeah. It's two days for the tournament and then travel on, on each either end, end, end yeah. of it. Okay. Um, any other questions? The being none. All those in favor of uh, the motion? Seven zero. Thank you, uh, Alan, for. We're taking a closer look at that too. Um, consideration of request from teachers for extension of unpaid child rearing leaves. Uh, you have two this, uh, two this evening. One is in written form. The other one uh, has been in verbal form. Uh, the first one is from Julie Robbins, and she is writing to request a year's leave from her second grade teaching position at Bond Cove. Uh, she's currently on leave to care for her two young children. So uh, what she is requesting is another year without pay. Do I have a motion? I move. I move that uh, we uh, accept the request for an additional year of unpaid leave for child rearing purposes. Do you have a second? Second. Thank you, Ann. Um, any questions or comments? I have a qu general question. Is it is two years generally? Have we ever done two years before? I, I don't know historically what you have done, but it is fairly typical. I shouldn't say fairly typical, but uh, it is usually uh, approved for a, a second year. Tom looks like he's had some experience with this, it? so. We have, and, and the, the circumstances are usually similar. Okay. Thank you. And, oh, go ahead. No, did go you ahead. do a vote? I don't know. Did you do a vote? No, <laughs> no. no, we haven't voted yet. No, we haven't yet. I'll stay out of the way then. <laughs> right. But we have two motions. So uh, at this point, if there's any, no more questions, all those in favor? 7 0. And the second one is Therese Roberts, who is a half time teacher in grade 8, and she is requesting, again, the extension of her half time leave without pay. I have a motion. I move that we accept the request of Therese Roberts for an extension on her half-time leave for child-rearing purposes. Thank you. A second? Trish? Any further questions? None. All those in favor? 7-0. Consideration of proposal to recognize two school sports teams. In our packets, um, we have a report from Keith Weatherby relating to um, the discussion and the unanimous approval at the athletic steering committee level of both middle school football and high school alpine skiing. This was subsequently reviewed by the um, extracurricular activities committee, which unanimously endorses um, Keith's uh, proposal. And we are bringing that to you tonight. It will be noted that there is no cost to the school department um, relative to accepting either team as club teams. Um, and there are also agreements in place and the understanding 
that under current budgetary um, considerations, we may not be able to advance them beyond the club team level for quite some time to come. But this will allow both, uh, both teams to, uh, to fully, um, well, in the middle school case, it won't make much difference, but in the high school alpine scheme, this allows them to compete in the uh, state championships. And, and Kevin, it also it, it allows the, the middle school programs to follow the same guidelines that our other middle well, exactly. school programs. Exactly, and that's, that's the importance of the middle school uh, football issue. Thank you, Elaine. Mm -hmm. Is the fact that this will bring the coaching situation and everything, the coaching evaluations, under the direct control of the school department. Um, so with that said, I would like to move that we um, accept both the middle school football and high school alpine skiing team and sanction club sports of the Cape Elizabeth schools. Do we have a second? Linda? Thank you. Uh, any further questions or discussion? I just have a question for clarification. So the boosters pay for the coaches, but they don't select them? And that's okay. That is, that is the nature Practice. of club okay. sports. Okay. Kind of sanctioned it was similar school. to those two coaches that were approved and had booster after them at the high school. Okay. Thank you. Rebecca? Um, I just want to be clear. Um, there is no cost to the school, or is there no cost to the school except the cost of insurance? It says here, the club itself or an affiliated booster organization is responsible for all costs of the program except the cost of insurance. <coughs> oh, it's just a blanket insurance. Yeah. Oh, jeez. It's there's late. No, yeah, there's, there's no additional <laughs> expense to the insurance policy. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> Great. Uh, all those in favor? 7 0. Thank you. At this point, uh, we also have time set aside for uh, public comment at the end of our meetings, and I don't see any at this point. Uh, the, we'll move on to the school board agenda requests for other members of the school boards. Is there anything that they would like to see brought up at a future business meeting? Seeing none, uh, announcement of the upcoming meetings. Uh, we have quite a few. We have a finance committee meeting on Wednesday, February 16th, 15th, that's right, at 8.15 in the superintendent's office. We have a school board workshop, if needed, on Tuesday, March 7th. That would be related to the uh, budget at 7 p.m. in the high school library. Another substance abuse committee meeting, Thursday, March 2nd, at 8 a.m. in the William Jordan Conference Room. Policy committee will meet on Tuesday, March 21st at 12 noon in the William Jordan Conference Room. Finance Committee will meet again also on oh, February 28th, backing up, uh, which is uh, at 12.30 in the Superintendent's Office. March 4th will be a school board workshop on the budget, which will start at 8 a.m. in the morning, uh, which will be here in Council Chambers. We have a school board business meeting on Tuesday, February no, that's today, okay. A personnel committee will meet on Monday, March 27th, uh, 1 p.m. in the superintendent's office. And as Kevin said, the extracurricular committee will meet on Tuesday, March 21st, 2 p.m. in the William Jordan Conference Room. Elaine, I have, there's also one other meeting. Sure. The, um, this Thursday is the first meeting of the wellness policy subcommittee. And I'll be meeting from 1230 to 2 in the middle school conference room. Great. Okay, thank you. Um, we have consideration of the superintendent's request to enter executive session to discuss the superintendent's evaluation as provided by one MRSA 4056A. Do I have a motion? So moved. Thank you, Kevin. A second. Thank you, Trish. I'll, uh, any questions? Having the purpose. All those in favor? Seven zero. Thank you very much. This meeting is adjourned.